In 2022, I sat my A-level physics papers and I received an A-star. In this video, I'm gonna go through the things that I believe are most helpful in terms of achieving those top grades. Firstly, understanding concepts. In physics, not all of the concepts and explanations are easy to understand. In fact, many of them are not simple at all. And sometimes, textbook explanations are not sufficient to help you understand a concept or idea. However, speaking from personal experience, concepts stick much more clearly in your memory if you truly understand the processes and steps which underlie the concepts. Moreover, clearly understanding the steps behind a phenomenon or concept really helps in ensuring you pick up the maximum marks available in explanation questions on the exam. Hence, it is important to first and foremost focus on truly understanding the topics and concepts you are being taught. So, how can you do this? Well, I've outlined the two main things that helped me the most. So first is using your teachers and using them a lot. So if you're confident enough, ask questions in class. This is ideal as it addresses the confusion as soon as it arises. However, you can also stay behind in lessons, wait till all other students have left and then ask questions to the teacher one-on-one. -on -one. Alternatively, emailing your teacher when you're going over things at home is also very helpful. I did all these things numerous times and they were all very helpful. And then the second thing I found was using YouTube videos. The YouTube channel Physics Online is very useful in understanding topics, especially first year topics. However, sometimes I found that the channel doesn't really go into that much detail. I haven't personally used them, but TL Physics is another channel which people recommend. What I personally did, which helped me the most, was not necessarily watching a specific channel or YouTuber. Instead, I just searched up the specific things which I was stuck on, and I found this useful as it gave me really in-depth videos which explained the concepts and topics. So after understanding the topics, the second big part is memorizing it. As I said before, it's very true that if you truly understand something, you'll remember it a lot better. However, having a process in place to keep testing yourself really reinforces it. Now, not all things on the course require necessarily a deep level of understanding. Some things just need to be memorized. The example which springs to mind for me is from the engineering option of the physics course, and that is the steps for how a refrigerator works. Not difficult, but something I just need to memorize for the exam. So the method I actually personally used for memorization was flashcards. And what I personally did was I made flashcards on Brainscape for the whole two years of the course and used that as my main resource for revision. But a good thing for you is you don't need to go through the effort of making said flashcards. If you want to, you can just use the ones that I used, just follow the link in the description. What I would do is I would just do flashcards most days until I'd achieved mastery in every section of the course. Now the next aspect which I think is really important in terms of achieving an A star is mastering those six marker questions. And there are two big things which I like to mention regarding six markers. The first thing I recommend is to use bullet points. Now you don't have to do this, but I found it much easier using bullet points and to help me separate my answer into discrete points. What can arise when you're doing six marker is when you don't use bullet points, you can kind of go off on tangents and do a lot of information which doesn't actually add to your answer, but it looks like a lot. Whereas in bullet points, it helps you clearly separate your answer down and only put the relevant information in there. What's more, using bullet points helps me clearly see the number of points which I've made. And then the second thing I'd like to say is don't limit the amount of information you put in there. Put it all in there as long as it's relevant. What I found a lot of the time when I was doing mocks and past papers is that I do a six marker, I then look at the mark scheme and there's a lot of information there which I clearly knew but I didn't put it down for some reason because I didn't think it was really relevant to the question. So try and find the sweet spot. Don't waffle loads and talk about things that aren't relevant but also don't limit yourself to really narrowly talk about the question. If you think something's relevant, go for it and add it to your answer. And what I found was a good way of learning if I was waffling or if it was relevant or was literally just doing lots of past papers. By looking at the different mark schemes from past papers, I could see what kind of things they were looking for when they were asking a specific question. Which leads me nicely on to exam practice. So in terms of past papers, there are a huge bank available to you. Your exam board website should have quite a few, but if they're not there, Physics and Math Tutor has loads. And don't get me wrong, past papers are really good, but what's also really useful is doing exam questions by topic. This way you can focus in on the topics you're not as confident in. And again, Physics and Math Tutor has a specific section which is literally labelled exam questions by topic. And what's really important when you're doing exam practice is paying close attention to the mark schemes. Use the mark schemes to see exactly what your exam board would like to see in their answers. I found this especially useful for two mark questions. Different exam boards might want different things, so look clearly at what your exam board wants to see in their answers. And then the final thing I want to talk about in terms of achieving that A star in A-level physics is the practical section. I can't really talk about this too much because that was the year where the practicals were kind of given to us, we knew which ones were coming up in the exam. But just on a basic level, it's important to learn the theory, the method and the safety, etc. for all the practicals that could come up on the exam. What I would say is particularly important is to learn the theory behind the practicals. 
It's where you can apply practicals, which are testing the same thing to a different method than you're used to when you're in the exam. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and good luck in your exams.